Hey everybody, welcome to another Collecting Casually video. A couple weekends ago I headed to downtown Wichita for the Air Capital Comic Con. My goal for this trip was to obviously pick up some comics and to talk to some comic vendors. Let's go ahead and see how it went. So besides being at the show to obviously pick up some more comics for my collection, I wanted to talk to a lot of the dealers and just ask them a couple questions that I thought might be unique and that they might not have heard of. So I've got three questions that I'm going to ask a lot of the dealers. Number one is kind of, if there was a cool or unique book that they would be excited to sell to somebody at the show that weekend, what would it be? The second question was, if there was a book that they would maybe be sad to see leave uh, the show, whether it came from their personal collection or they had some sort of sentimental attachment to it, what might that book be? And third, if there was a book of any significance that they would want anybody to know about that they've recently added to their personal collection. First up is Tom with Middle School Geek Comics. Let's see what he had to say. All right, so we're here with Tom with Middle School Geek Comics. We're going to ask him a couple questions here about comics in general and the show. So if there was one unique or cool book that you would like to see somebody buy today or be excited about, what would that be? Yeah, so I think the one book that I'd be really happy if anybody bought, it's not just one book, but I think any pre-code horror book okay. that's kind of on that top row up there. I really love pre-code horror, and I think it's really awesome when people get to add pre-code horror to their collection. So I'd be happy if any of those books sold, uh, just because that's kind of what I'm into. Okay, awesome. And then if there's a book that you were sad to see leave, maybe the, the wall or, you know, you're, you obviously want to sell books uh, at a comic yeah, show. Yeah, I think if there is one book that I would be sad to see um, that is really, really hard to replace, it'd probably be, and this may sound weird to some people, is probably the Ghost Rider, okay. just because that was my PC copy for a long time. And then eventually I got to this spot where like, okay, I, it's going for so much now. I just have to go ahead and put it up for sale. So, gotcha. and if it's sold, I'd be sad, but at the same time, like it would allow me to buy some other stuff that I'd like to do. Awesome. And then last question, what's the most recent book you added to your personal collection? So I collect a lot of golden age books. And so the most recent book I picked up is Buck Rogers number two. Um, and so it's a really cool uh, cover. Um, there's only five issues in the series. It came out in 41, and I was able to pick that up at OFCON uh, down in North Norman, Oklahoma. And so I was really excited to add that. And uh, I only need like two or three more books for the run. So Awesome. Thanks for your time. Have hey, a great show. Thanks. Not only did I ask Tom those questions we just saw, I also bought some books from him. Now, my main goal at Air Capital Comic Con was to fill some runs that I've been trying to put together, namely Uncanny X-Men, Amazing Spider-Man, and a couple others here and there. Um, one of my kind of guilty pleasure books that I like to buy or sets are Marvel Tales, and I picked up a few of these from Tom. So I uh, ended up with 79, 109, 111, and 175. No real significance to any of those books, but they were all books that I needed for my collection. Uh, also had 176 that I picked up from him as well. Moving on to X-Men, uh, I grabbed two books from Tom. Uh, first one was X-Men number 150, X-Men versus Magneto, and this is kind of an origin story of Magneto, so kind of a minor key there, but uh, nothing too crazy. And then just a run filler of 144. Moving on to Amazing Spider-Man. I picked up a few more books from Tom. Uh, we got 189 here. 185. 166. 165. And then some sub 100 books. Um, I've been trying to pick those up every now and then as I can afford them. And I'm happy to buy like a book that's in a lower grade or lower quality, just kind of as a placeholder. Uh, so the first one I picked up was issue 81, first appearance of Kangaroo. And then issue number 80. If you don't already follow Tom on 
Instagram, MSG Comics. He really posts up some great posts. A lot of times he's posting uh, memes and jokes, but he's also posting some really cool books and uh, collection buys, things like that. So definitely check him out. Next up is Monsters Lair Comics, and while I didn't buy any books from them, they did answer my questions and I thought gave some really insightful answers. We're here at Air Capital Comic Con and we're at the Monsters Lair Comics booth and we have a couple questions for them. What unique book or cool book would you be excited to see someone buy from the show today? Well, uh, we've got an X-Men 6 that's on the wall that came in just uh, a couple of days ago in a collection. Uh, we don't get a lot of early X-Men's in, so that would be a pretty cool one to see move if uh, somebody came up and was interested. Okay. And if there was a book that you'd actually be sad to see move from the collection, maybe it was one that came out of a personal collection or just has maybe sentimental value, what might that be? Uh, I've got a Betty and Veronica one. It's currently in my personal collection, but it's on the wall. And yeah, if it's sold, I'd be happy to make the money, but uh, that's going to be a hard one to replace, so I'd be sad to see that one go. Great. And what's the latest or newest book that you've added to your personal collection? Um, I'm working on a run, a pre-hero journey into mystery, and so uh, may not sound like much to anybody else, but I bought a journey into mystery 67, and now I'm down to one book to have one through 82. Awesome. Thanks for your time. You bet. Thank you. Next up is what I would consider the main uh, comic book shop here in Wichita, and that's Prairie Dog Comics. Now, I picked up a ton of books uh, to fill my runs. Again, I picked up some Marvel Tales, uh, some 91 X-Men run, um, some Uncanny X-Men, and I believe some Spider-Man books here. I'm not going to go through all of these, but this is the stack that I picked up from them. It's kind of crazy. What's kind of funny is, uh, besides this Marvel Tales 34, which I just love this cover of and I love the early copies of Marvel Tales, um, is I ended up with a Marvel Tales 62, which is the, uh, I guess, the retelling of the Amazing Spider-Man 81 here that I picked up from MSG Comics earlier in the day. Um, but yeah, I picked up a ton of books from them. I'm not going to go through all of them and show them to you, but I did ask them the same questions that I had asked everybody else, so let's see what they had to say. All right, we're here with Vinny with Prairie Dog Comics, a local comic book shop and toy shop here in yeah. Wichita. We got a couple questions for him. So if there was a unique or cool book that you'd like to see somebody pick up at the show this weekend, what would it be? Well, we've got two. I've got uh, Albedo number, was it number four? This has got a big brew cameo and it's got a Usabagu Jimbo cover. I know I just butchered that name, All right? And this guy here, like, this is a 10 cent timely comic Captain America. It's graded at four or five, but how often do you see a 10 cent book slab still in good condition? Right. That would that'd be really gnarly for somebody to pick up. Awesome, and if there was a book that you'd be sad to see leave the wall or the bins, uh, what would it be? Honestly, I would say the Frank Miller Daredevil right here. It's a newsstand edition of, of the first Frank Miller doing Daredevil. Like, that's, it's cool to have on the wall. I would be sad to see it go, but I'm sure someone would love to have it in the collection. All right, and what's a notable book that you've recently added to your personal collection? To my collection? Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, most recently, I sent off uh, the 90, was it 91, 92 X-Men number one and got Jim Lee, Chris Claremont, and Scott Williams' signature on it. And that, I it's kind of like a goalpost. It was one of my first comics I ever bought growing up. So. It was pretty cool to have Seems it like slabbed and, and autographed. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time. Thanks, man. Now, in addition to the Marvel Tales and X-Men books that I picked up from Prairie Dog Comics, I picked up a large stack of Marvel Triple Action. I love the covers on these. They're just super classic artwork. Um, number two here with uh, Doom and Thing on it. Love this cover and the artwork. There's just so many great covers in this series and great stories as well. Um, I just had to grab these. They were priced just right, uh, and I'm happy to add them to my collection. Next up was Uncanny Collections, and I've seen him at this show and other local shows before. He really has a great wall set up. Um, I feel like he's one of the newer vendors that I've seen at this show, but he's really expanded quite a bit. He is, his booth was one of the larger comic booths at the show, and I really liked uh, all the books that he was showing off. Got a chance to ask him a couple of those questions as well. Even though I didn't pick up any books from him, I thought everything he had out on display was great, um, and just another vendor I was happy to talk with. All right, we're here with Peter with Uncanny Collections, and we've got a couple oh, questions for him. Yeah. Uh, what unique or cool comic book that you have here on the wall or in your uh, bins would you be excited for somebody to buy at the show? Uh, I would say the Amazing Spider-Man number 101. So this is the first appearance of Morbius here. It's a 9.0. It does have some restoration on it, which is why I'm offering a really good price on it. 
um, they say it's just like a couple little dots. So it's the kind of thing like maybe even if somebody was willing to crack it open and try to get it removed, you could still end up with a really high grade copy of it. So iconic book, iconic first cover. So even though the movie wasn't well received, still it's going to be an amazing book. Um, at the show here, I'd let it go for a thousand dollars. So it's a really good deal. Awesome. That'd be willing to do here. Yeah. And then, if there was a book that you'd be sad to see you leave the wall or this yeah. collection because maybe it came out of a personal collection or has sentimental value, what book would that be? So uh, what I've got here currently, um, this Mary Jane cover right here. Um, I just think it's a really beautiful art gem, art germ piece, and um, that was a, a particularly rare one that I got in. Um, if I didn't sell it, I'd probably keep it for my own, but okay. it's up for sale. And if there was a significant book that you've added recently to your personal collection, what would that be? Yeah, I got on Edge of Spider-Verse number two, first Gwen Stacy, uh, with signatures and remarks by the artist, and um, it's really cool. I picked it up for a great deal recently, and glad to have that in my collection. Awesome, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Another local vendor I talked to and bought some books from is Sector 7G Comics. I talked to James there, um, and not only did he sell me a couple amazing Spider-Man books, no keys, uh, just some low 300s books here. Um, he did answer the questions that we had. Uh, let's see what he had to say. We're here with James with Sector 7G Comics. We got a couple questions for him. Number one, what unique book or cool book would you be excited to sell this weekend at the show? This weekend at the show, I would really be excited to sell Sandman number one. Had a stack of Sandmans sitting at home Went and snagged them because of the show and did not realize I had a number one sitting in the collection. So if that thing sold this weekend, that would be incredible. All right, and if there's a book you would be sad to see leave the collection or wall, whether it's because uh, it came out of your personal collection or has some sort of sentimental value, what book would that be? Uh, just about anything Dark Horse Star Wars. Uh, this one in particular, because it's the first appearance of the uh, Dark Troopers. And I have, I think I have another copy, but I've sold some of my Dark Horse books and I read every single one of them and I feel bad because I kind of didn't want to part with them, but I did that anyways. All right. And then if there's a book of any significance you've added to your personal collection lately, what would that be? Well, one I did add recently, it was a few months back, was I found the first appearance of Peacemaker in uh, Fighting Five, I believe, number 40. And an old Charlton book from 1966, I believe. That was one of those on my I need to find list. You know, I really wanted that book, and I finally found it at Smallville this last summer. All right. Sounds like some good books, and thanks for your time. Have a great day, man. Thank you, you too. Another local Wichita vendor is Paul with Mad Dog Comics, and I picked up a lot of uh, amazing Spider-Man and Uncanny X-Men books from him as well. Again, I picked up a huge stack, just run fillers here, no major keys or anything like that. Too many books to go through in this video, um, but I really appreciate uh, Paul and his time answering the questions and letting me flip through the books. He had actually just gotten this collection in and priced. Um, nobody else had looked at it yet, I don't believe, because everything was there in order, so I picked up everything I needed for my runs. Um, but one thing that wasn't uh, really on my list, but I just had to snag it because the price was right, uh, was this Secret Wars number one. I have uh, not many of these books, and I do not have Secret Wars number one yet, so I'm happy to add this to my collection. Um, it's actually in really nice shape, um, possibly grade-worthy, um, and if I do get it graded, it'll go nice with my uh, Secret Wars number eight that is slabbed. Let's see what Paul had to say. All right, we're here with Paul with Mad Dog Comics. We got a couple questions for him. Number one, if there's a cool or unique book that you've got for sale here or maybe that you've sold already at the show, what is that? Probably right now the most unique I have is that Ultimate Spider-Man first appearance of Miles Morales. All right, and if there's a book that you might be sad to leave the wall or, or the, what you've got for sale here because maybe it has significance to you or, or some other reason, what would that be? I would have to say probably this autographed Thor, first Jane Foster Thor. All right, and last one, if there's a book that you've added to your collection recently that's of any significance or you'd want someone to know about, what is that? I picked up a Luke Cage number one from 1972 that's been something I've been looking for for a while. All right, thanks, Paul. Have you a great bet. show. Thanks for coming out. Now, this next vendor was new to me, and this is Ray with New Age Comics. And as his name suggests, he had mostly new comics at the show. Um, you know, a lot of the books, uh, things like 8 Billion Genies, um, some of the new Whatnot books, things like that. He didn't have any of the, any older books, uh, which is kind of what I was after, but he was kind enough to answer a couple questions for me. All right, we're here with Ray with New Age Comics, and we have a couple of questions for him. Number one, what is the most unique or cool book that you'd be excited to sell at the con? 
But right now it's this one. It's a wood cover a comic book. It's a Nottingham. The whole cover is made of wood. I haven't seen any like this out here. It's pretty neat. Uh, second question is going to be, if there was a book that you'd be sad to sell this weekend, maybe because it holds significance to you or some other reason, what book might that be? Uh, probably be The Walking Dead, number one that I have. I've had that for a long time. I got it slabbed myself and yeah, I really don't want to sell it. But. <laughs> well, that makes sense. And then if there's a book of any significance that you've added to your personal collection lately, what would that mean? Um, Mostly, so right now the big current books are these Ninja Funks. Uh, it's a real hot book right now. Sell them. I uh, got a whole a bunch of different covers, all the different characters. And I uh, just like got this one in today. Actually, it's, uh, it's an homage to the Beastie Boys cover. So those are the best ones to, you know, that I've been getting lately. So. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Sure. Thank you. Darren with Boomer Comics is another vendor that was at the show, and while I didn't buy any books from him, I have bought some things from him in the past, but he was nice enough to answer a couple questions. All right, we're here with Darren with Boomer Comics. So, Darren, what's a book you'd be most excited to sell at the show, whether it's a cool or unique book or something of significance that you'd be excited to see? Well, we got the Spider-Man 129, probably one of my personal favorites, like the Punisher. Spider-Man is my favorite character, so... That'd be, probably be that one. All right, and if there's a book that you'd be sad to sell, whether it's hold some significance for you, if you just had it in the on the wall for a while and would be sad to see it leave? I don't know so much of sad, but uh, you know, that Venom Gold cover is one we just got in. We got a sketch from Sam DeRose on it, so wouldn't mind maybe hold on to that one for a little bit. Okay. And if there's a book that you've added to your personal collection recently that you're uh, we're excited to pick up, uh, what would that be? I picked up some Golden Age Batman over the last year, so I've uh, enjoyed hunting for and accumulating those. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time. Good luck hey, with the rest of your no show. No problem. Thank you. Thanks. Another vendor that was new to me was Dave with TIY Comics, and he had a really great deal for on some $3 books, and I uh, added quite a few to my collection. Um, really just a stack of Spider-Woman books. Um, that were just priced right you know three dollars a piece for some run fillers you can't really beat those prices i also did pick up a marvel team up human torch and iron man just a really cool copy here that i i don't i don't really um collect marvel team up but i just had to grab this book for three bucks the book that i was most excited to pick up from him though was this special edition x-men number one for just three dollars um and a little uh, story about this i actually tried to buy this book this last weekend at another local shop um and they wanted $60 for this book, which is way overpriced. Can't believe they were asking that. I had actually forgotten that I'd picked this book up uh, at the comic show for $3 a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I'm glad I didn't spend anywhere near that uh, $60 on that book. I just left it at the counter and uh, headed out. Uh, but let's see what he has to say. All right, we're here with Dave with TIY Comics. I've got a couple questions for him. Sure, Number go ahead. one, what is a cool or exciting book that you uh, would be excited to sell or maybe have already sold at the show this weekend? Hmm. Well, I sold a couple of cool books already. Uh, I had a Wolverine number one from 1982, uh, one of my favorite covers. I was a little bit sad to see that go, but I was also happy to make that sale. So, um, I also sold a copy of Amazing Spider-Man 300. Most people know it's the first appearance of Venom. Uh, I was happy to see that one go to another home, so that's awesome. Perfect. And if there's a book that you were, would maybe be sad to see leave the collection, whether it came from your personal collection or holds some other significance for you, what might that be? Hmm. Which one don't I want to see go? I, this one, uh, Next Men, uh, John Burns Next Men number uh, 21's first appearance of Hellboy. It's hard to find. I, I mean, I, I got it up for sale, but if nobody buys, it's not going to break my heart. Perfect. And then, if, is there a book that you've maybe added to your personal collection that you're excited about? Uh, let me think about that for a minute. Um, yeah, I recently picked up a uh, first appearance of the Punisher, Amazing Spider-Man 129. So that's tucked away in the vault and not coming out anytime soon. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, that's a good one to add. Yeah. Thanks so much for your time and yeah. good luck with the rest of your show. Thanks, man. Take care. And some of my last purchases at the show were from a vendor that I can't remember their name. And they were actually really busy when I was going around talking to all the vendors and filming them and asking them their questions. But I was super excited and maybe the most excited about this purchase from them. It was a really low cost purchase. I think I paid maybe $5 for this set of four books. 
But this is a uh, Pizza Hut exclusive set of four X-Men books. Um, so I ended up with issues one through four. It's an X-Men set. Uh, and I have like five or six copies of number one, but I could never find locally anyways. Uh, issue two, three, or four. Um, so I just had to grab them. They had them bundled together already. $5 was just like too low of a price for me to pass up. I could have bought them online, probably pretty easy, but the fact that they were there right in front of me, I just had to grab them. And towards the end of day two of Air Capital Comic Con, I actually ran into Mark Brown. He's the owner of Prey Dog Comics. That's the kind of probably most popular and largest comic book uh, vendor here in the town of Wichita. Now, I asked him those same three questions, but I also had him kind of give an overview of Prey Dog Comics and their history here in town. All right, we're here with Mark, owner of Prey Dog Comics here in Wichita. And Mark, if there's a book that you uh, would maybe be excited to sell, whether it's unique or cool, something something you'd be excited to sell here at the show this weekend, what would that be? Uh, an Amazing Spider-Man number 50. You know, that's always a nice book to have, the first appearance at Kingpin. You know, always hard to find a nice shape. Great. And then if there's a book you maybe would be sad to leave the wall, maybe you've had it uh, here for a while and just, uh, you know, it's going to a better home, but sad to see it leave. You know, probably Tomb of Dracula number 10, you know, and that's the one, you know, with Blade, the movie they're talking about coming out. That's one that I, it's always a nice book to have and you hate to see that go because it, it's, everybody always wants it. All right, and then maybe, do you have a book that you've added to your personal collection or something that you picked up recently that you'd be excited to tell other people about or we're just happy to add to? I'll tell you what. I picked up, I, and originally when I was collecting books, because I don't do as much as what I used to, it was all of the awesome movie and TV photo cover books. And I picked up a, uh, uh, or one that I'd like to get was a Brady Bunch number one, of all things. And it is a very hard book to get hold of. I've had a lot of books and I, I've got a number two and there's only two issues of it, but it's a great book. You know, it's just something that nobody ever has. You never see it online or, it just, it'll pop up one day, oh, yeah. so. And then what can you tell us about Prairie Dog Comics? I'd say you're probably the you know, longest standing, obviously, uh, comic book uh, shop in town. If you wanted to give us an overview of Prairie Dog Comics, what would that mean? Well, you know, I, I, I uh, got my sales tax license back in 1976, and then we opened up the first store in 81. I've had up to three stores going at one time, and uh, now we're down to the one, which is a lot better because of the internet and everything. Uh, we do some internet sales, but I still like the one-on-one -on -one with the with the retail traffic coming through. Um, I, you know, it, things are kind of in a lull right now, but the classic stuff, the good old stuff, th that'll never go away. You know, that's the fun part. You know, is that, and that's that's where it's near and dear, closest to my heart, is is the stuff that 10, 12, 20 cents, you know, cover price stuff. But there's always a classic in the making that you don't know until until it is, you know, it's not until it is. So that's the fun part. It's, it's kind of like it's a, a roll of the dice and you never know what's gonna come up next. Awesome, well thanks for your time, Mark. Have a great rest of your show. I appreciate it, thank yeah. you. So there it is, that's a quick look at my uh, Air Capital Comic Con 2022 trip, my purchases, um, some conversations with the vendors. I hope you enjoyed the questions that I asked them. I tried to come up with some things that were maybe um, not common questions that they might get at a comic book show or just uh, encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. So I hope you enjoyed those comics. Uh, and the questions. If you do, leave me a comment below. And if you like this content, go ahead and give me a like on the video. And if you really wanna see more of this type of stuff, give me a subscribe. I appreciate it and we'll see you in the next video.